Let's now see how we can use a for loop to really uh, uh, improve our great calculator app, which contains lots of duplicates. Before I actually apply the uh, for loop uh, into the uh, great calculator example, I'd like to show you the basic syntax for for loop. For, so I don't assume any knowledge about Java loops. So I want to I want to do from scratch. All right. So let's now right click on the console apps package and say new and then class. Let's give a name. Let's just simply say for loop only meant to illustrate the syntax and then make sure you click on the main method and say finish. Okay, double click to maximize. So let's see what would be the simplest for loop you can write. So for, which is a keyword, and then there are three parts. Integer i initialized to be zero, i is going to be less than five. So here it can be some integer literal you can write directly if you know the number or it can simply be maybe some uh, variable that's actually real uh, that's actually assigned uh, earlier but we'll see example maybe later uh, in the course but let me just get it simple i plus plus okay and then uh let me print out the value of i in the uh in the body of the uh, loop okay i'm gonna say i is and then uh the value of i all right so this will be the simplest loop you can actually write and I would like to talk about exactly what this loop really means. And let's now switch to iPad. Okay, so this is basically exactly what I wrote, except that I need to say colon over here. But you can see the point over here. Okay. Now let's see exactly what this means. Let me just uh, talk about each part for the loop over here. So this part over here is called the uh, initialization part for the loop. This part here. So this is the initialization. Which declares some loop counter called i. So i over here is called loop counter. Declaring a loop counter. In principle, you would just need one. But in some cases, maybe uh, your problem is harder to solve. In that case, you might need two uh, loop counters. But let's just focus on one. Okay. And then uh, this i is less than 5 over here. Uh, you can see between the semicolon, you can see there are two semicolons over here for the syntax. So this is its first semicolon, there's a second semicolon, right? So now the middle one, the middle part over here, I call this the state condition. Meaning that this condition here should be a Boolean expression. So this is the principle you have to remember in order to understand the behavior for the for loop. So this means as long as i less than 5. In this case, i less than 5 is the state condition. As long as the state condition is true, evaluates to true. Keep executing the body implementation of the loop the body implementation of the loop and when i say the body of implementation body implementation of the loop i really mean whatever that's enclosed within the opening and closing brackets so in this case this will be the body of the loop just one line in this case but of course in general you can have as many lines as you like you can even have uh, some if statements as the body of the loop you can even have another loop as the body of the loop there'll be nested loop that's something we'll see maybe in later weeks so this part over here is said to be the body implementation of the loop or just body of the loop either way okay finally uh we have uh also this part over here the final part the third part over here okay so this part here is really to uh, updates the loop counter. So I'm trying to put it in a very general way. So when you say update the loop counter, you want to update uh, some little, uh, you want to put some little changes to the loop. So here I say plus plus. Remember, this is augmented assignment that we talked about in the elementary programming lecture uh, in the beginning of the course. So which means I'm going to increment the value for i uh, by one each time. 
And then it's really important for you to know now that we are start we are starting to talk about iterations. So termination is really a key issue over here. Termination. Okay, we're gonna see example maybe later in your lecture, or be maybe in the tutorial videos where termination could be a tricky issue to ensure. But I would say, uh, just remember whenever you specify a for loop syntax. So this part over here is to ensure termination. And let me just explain that right away. Ensure termination. All right, I want you to look at uh, over here. The loop counter i is initialized to be zero. And then as long as i is less than five, we're gonna keep executing the body implementation of the, of the loop. And every time at the end of each iteration, we're going to increment the value of i. Let's now trace exactly how the for loops work. And then I'm gonna use a so-called tracing table over here. I'm gonna show you the value for the loop counter i, which is declared over here. And then I'm gonna show you the state condition which is i less than five in this case, whether that should be evaluated to true or false. In case it is true, I'm actually going to go for another iteration. If it is false, I'm gonna exit from the loop. And then also, what's the stage for the loop? It could be iteration number one, two, three, four, five. And notice that in some special cases, uh, it is possible not to have even a single iteration is actually possible. We don't really talk about this special case uh, in this uh, week, but we might talk about it later, okay? Just notice that. And also, what action you're going to perform for each iteration, if any. Let's go very carefully over here. Let's start with uh, the initialization. Um, so this line over here is uh, executed only once. So declare loop counter i and also initialize that to be 0. So 0 over here. And also, we're going to evaluate the state condition over here for the very first time. So i is less than 5, which is which will be zero is less than five which will be true all right so that means which uh so this being true means we have to go for the very first iteration right as long as it is true you always go for the next in this case we should go from in, in, uh, initialization to the first iteration so since we're going to go uh, for a different stage i'm, I'm going to change the color so this will be iteration number one and a word i keep mentioning is about iteration it's a very important word for you to know. Okay, iteration number one, and uh, we're gonna x. Uh, since we're gonna go for iteration number one, so it's going to be over here. Okay, for iteration number one, uh, execute the body of the implementation. In this case, just one line. So we're gonna execute this line over here, right? So it's going, it's going to be the current value for i, which will be zero. So we're gonna say uh, print to the console, i is zero, and then don't forget at the end of each iteration, you gotta uh, execute one extra additional line, which will be I plus plus at the end. So this will be uh, the other action. So let's see the action over here. So you're gonna print the I, which I just did to the console, and also I plus plus. Okay. After the first iteration, what will be the value for I? So that will be going from zero to one. One over here, right? And then you can think about, and now, before we know if there should be a second iteration, we should really check the state condition. So it would be i less than 5 again. So we're going to check it again. And notice that we don't really execute this part anymore. We don't. It's been done only once. So now i less than 5, so that'd be 1 less than 5. It should be true. So this is true. That means we're going to go into another iteration, which will be iteration number 2. So iteration number 2. And then what should be the action? Similar, you're gonna execute this line over here. We're gonna print i. Okay, we're gonna print the i to the console and current value for i is simply just one. So we're gonna print out i is one. And then don't forget also extra additional final line over here. So we're gonna say i plus plus, which will increment it from one to two. Okay, it's a little bit tedious, but I think for the very first time, I'm willing to do it together with you, right? It's gonna be two over here, right? So now we're going to evaluate the state condition for the third time over here. And then for the state condition, it's going to be 2 less than 5 is going to be true over here. And then, so that means we're going to go for another iteration. So this will be iteration number 3. So it would be iteration number 3 over here. And then we're going to execute this again, the body of the loop. 
So we're gonna uh, first of all, we're gonna print the i. So over here, you're gonna print this line again. So what's the current value for i? It's simply just two over here, right? It's two, and then uh, we're gonna print it out. I is two, and then don't forget to read also increment the i as the last line. So this will be i plus plus. So after this, i's value will be three, two to three, and then we're gonna evaluate this uh, line here i less than five another time to determine if there should be another iteration. So what I will do is I'm gonna say uh, three less than five is also true. So they mean, this means we should go to a fourth iteration, right? Hopefully so far you haven't lost. It's really important to see exactly what's going on for the very simple loop to really understand the semantics. Okay, we're gonna go into iteration number four right now. And for iteration number four, we're gonna execute this for the fourth time, right? And then we're going to print the i. So that means we're going to execute uh, this line over here again. So now what's the current value for i? It's 3. Okay, so we're going to say i is 3. And then don't forget, you also have to uh, execute uh, i++ plus plus as a last step. i++. Plus plus. And this one over here is actually going to uh, put the value to be 3 to 4. Okay. And then after this, we're gonna evaluate this uh, state condition again, right? You can kind of see the pattern over here, but I'm just gonna repeat. So uh, do this. So four less than five also is going to give you true. So that means we're gonna go for the fifth iteration. So finally, let's say, so it's gonna be iteration number five. What should, it, what should I do? So we're gonna execute this line for the fifth time. So this will be uh, to really print the I and uh, so we're gonna execute this line over here, right? Let me just uh, put it at the bottom here. We're gonna uh, execute this line. And what's the current value for uh, for i? Four, okay? And then, so that'll be i is four. And then don't forget, you also have to execute i++ at the end. All right, we're almost done. So after this, i's value is going to be five. And now we're gonna evaluate this one more time. So let me put it here, i less than five here, right? So if I try that over here, five less than five is going to give you false over here. And then should we go for iteration number six? The answer is no. So at the end of the fifth iteration, basically the value of i is such that you will give, uh, you will make the state condition here false, which means we don't go any further. So how many iterations have we executed so far? You can see over here, we got execution number one, two, three, four, and five, meaning that we actually print out the value of i, one, two, three, four, five, five times. So zero, one, two, three, four, right? So really try to understand uh, exactly how things are doing. Uh, and this will be how you trace the, uh, uh, the code for the for loop, right? That will be the only time I can do this detail together with you. Hopefully, you, you get it. Oh, uh, you got it. All right, let's go back to the uh, Eclipse. And then let's simply just execute uh, this console application. And this will be exactly what I said over here, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. All right. Let me just mention uh, uh, one more thing about the scope of the variables and then we can actually, uh, and then we can uh, uh, apply this for loop syntax to our great application, uh, our great calculation example. One thing very important for you to note is whenever, if you declared i over here, so that means the scope of variable i is only within this particular for loop, meaning that you cannot use the i outside the for loop. For example, you simply cannot say something like this. If I say system out of print line, let's say here, I might try to say i is, and I want to get access to uh, the value of i outside the for loop. This is going to be disallowed over here, right? You can, you can see over here, if you move the mouse over, you will simply say i cannot be resolved to be a variable because it's simply not there. Okay, let me put a comment over here. i is outside the scope of the for loop over here. Okay, let's now just put this into comments. And I would like to talk about 
this uh, particular rule over here, and that will suggest if you really want to print out the value of i outside the loop, what should you do? Okay, I'll show it to you. You can also try that. Let's now switch to iPad over here. Uh, for now, please just focus on the pink one over here. Let's show you the erroneous example, just to emphasize again, the scope. You can see over here, we are declaring uh, loop counter i and, init uh, and initialize that to be zero. So you can think about this is part of uh, the for loop over here. The consequence of that is the scope of the i will just be within the for loop over here. I'm going to box it in the pink over here. So this will be the scope for the for loop. Okay, uh, let me write it down over here. You can think about this is the scope of loop counter i. And then now you can easily see that when I try to use this particular variable i over here, apparently it's outside this particular box. So this is why this is illegal. Okay, you just cannot use it. Okay, the resolution to that is the blue one I'm trying to show over here. You want to somehow declare i such that its scope is going to somehow cover the entire, for example, main method or the utility method, which will include the i over here. That's why uh, that's uh, why you should do. Let's see exactly how you can do it. So the idea will be you can see this semicolon over here, the first one. You can see uh, to the left over there is simply just empty. So you can think about the first part about initialization. I talk. Uh, for the loop counter I spoke about, this part is simply just empty. And then I simply just declare i to be uh, zero outside the for loop. The consequence of this is the rest of the method, either the main method or the utility method, will be the scope for this loop counter i. Okay, so this is how I resolve it. So you can think about this will be the scope of loop counter i. So if you contrast the pink case and also the blue case, you can see very easily the dif what the difference is. So now, uh, since this will be the scope, if you talk about i over here, or the use of i over here, so these two are within the scope. The scope of i, because they're simply within this particular box, right? So that's uh, some rule I would like you to uh, pay attention to because you might run into a uh, mistake like this. In which case, if you really want to uh, get access to the last value for i, in that case, you can uh, refer to uh, simply put this out inside the scope for the for loop like this. All right. So that's about the uh, uh, for loop syntax and also scope uh, rule I would like to talk about. Let's see how we can apply this for loop syntax into our great calculator app.